What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be getting into the book of Ruth. Hallelujah. Ruth uh, was either the grandmother or great-grandmother of David. And there's only four chapters in the book of Ruth. And then we'll be getting into 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. But uh, before we get started, before I even mention myself, Pray for my father. He has a major surgery coming up on the 14th. Pray for him. Pray for that surgery, surgery to go well. Pray for his healing. And also, myself, over the last couple days, it's been a week. A week today that I released my new music project called Last Days. You can find that on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Larry Newport. But a couple days into that, a couple days after that, after I released it, and also did something else online, uh, I developed this toe infection, and it's spread to my foot, the infections in my foot. I, I was actually in the hospital the past two days, uh, not, not past two days straight, two different hospitals. But I had uh, five shots in my toe to numb it, which should have just been one or two at the most. Five shots in my toe, and then the toe was cut open a little bit to let some of the infection out. But the infection seems to be spreading through, I don't know if y'all will be able to see right here. The difference between my feet, but the left one is swollen more, and you can see the redness. the The infection seems to be spreading uh, into my foot and up my leg. And you know this can be very serious. I could lose a toe. I could lose a foot. I could lose a leg. And it, I'm not an expert on infections. But I don't think it should be spreading this fast. There's something up with this. Keep me in prayers. Keep me in prayers. And uh, more than myself, keep my dad in prayers. He has a major surgery coming up. Uh, for Also for an infection. A different type of infection on the 14th so pray for him you know this is what this is crazy I've never dealt with anything like this in my life and the pain of uh, getting five shots with a big needle the thick needle in my toe in less than half an hour I've had a lot of bad injuries. That's some of the worst pain I've felt in my life. Right after I re right after I release this music, and right after something else, and right as I mean this this infection developed, right right after I did something else online, and I'll just leave it at that for right now. Maybe I'll talk about it later, but I'll leave it at that for right now. But I need your prayers. I need God to... Oh, Lord, I, I pray. Lord, please heal me. Please heal me, Lord. But more than that, my Father. Because we are to care about others more than ourselves. We are to, we are to care about others, other people's lives. More than our own. That's love. But uh. Let's get into the book of Ruth here. Before, before I get started let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins. And been made right with God. 
is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death. A body and soul destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, he didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. He suffered for us. So that through him, that death in the lake of fire is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three, three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins, ask him to forgive you. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And uh, you know, I want I wanted to show you all uh, a little bit more about my foot. But uh God is leading me not to right now. I mean, but it's uh, swollen for sure. My foot and ankle is swollen. Uh, because of the infection. But let's go ahead and get into Ruth. And I trust God to deliver me. And it's like, uh, you know, it's like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we will not serve your gods. We will not bow down. And no matter what happens with me, I will not bow down. I won't cave to the enemy. I won't cave to the attacks of the enemy. No matter what, we have to endure. We have to serve Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Now let's get into Ruth. Hallelujah. Ruth 1. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land. So this is right after Judges. That there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Bethlehem and Judah. Again, that's where Jesus was born. A certain man of Bethlehem and Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab. With his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech. Or, yeah, Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. Ephrathites. Oh... In other words, I believe it's uh, descendants of Ephraim. Ephrathites of Bethlehem and Judah. Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left, left with, her, with her two sons. They took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of one was Orpah. And the name of the other was Ruth. And they lived there about ten years. Then both Mel Melon and Chilion also died. And the woman was bereaved of her two children and her husband. So Naomi lost her husband and her two children. Then he she just had her daughter, daughters-in-law, uh, Orpah, and Ruth left. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the land of Moab. For she had heard that the land of Moab, heard in the land of Moab, 
that Yahuwah had visited his people and giving them food. There was a famine. So she departed from the place where she was at and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return, each of you to, to your own mother's house. May Yahuwah deal kindly with you, as you, have dealt con as you have dealt with the dead and with me. May Yahuwah grant that you may, that you may find rest, each in the house of her husband. And then she kissed them, and they lifted, lifted, lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, but we, we will surely return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return, my daughters. Why should you go with me? Yet I have, have I yet sons in my womb, that they, that, 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 that they may be your husbands? Return, my daughters, daughters-in-laws. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I said I had hope, if I should even have a husband tonight and also bear sons, would you therefore wait? Until they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. For it is harder for me than for you. For the hand of Yahuwah has gone forth against me. She was, doing, she was going through a tough time. She lost her husband and her two sons. And they lifted, they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clung to her. Orpah kissed her, but Ruth clung to her, hugged her, held on to her. And then, and then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people. Speaking about Orpah. This is Naomi speaking. Then she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back, to your, gone, gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Thus may Yahuwah do to me. And worse, if anything but death parts, parts you and me, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. And, you know, Ruth was either the, I'd have to look at it again, uh, either the grandmother or the great-grandmother of David, a Moabite. And even, even uh, Rahab from Jericho was in the lineage of Jesus. And the Moabites were actually descendants of uh, Lot, Abraham's uh, nephew. So they both went until they came to Bethlehem. And when they had come to Bethlehem, all the city was stirred because of them. The women said, is this Na Naomi? So I guess Naomi was popular back then. She, she was well known. The whole city was stirred because of them. And the woman said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, She was humble. She said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Which means, uh, the word Na the, the name Naomi mean, means pleasant or pleasantness. She said, uh, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Which Mara means, I'm trying to look at the footnote here. Bitter. Mara means bitter. She said, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, but Yahuwah has brought me back empty. But little did she know that her her daughter in law that that little did she know that she was gonna be a part of the bloodline of the Messiah. 
She said, I went out full, but Yahuwah has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Na Naomi, since Yahuwah has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and with, her, and with her, Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, who returned from the land of Moab, they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest, which is uh, early spring. And that's the end of Ruth chapter 1. Hallelujah. Lord willing, I'll be able to continue going on through these Bible studies. You know, I have a... It seems to be a serious infection in my body right now. But I trust in God. I don't know what it is. I don't know how uh, just a normal infection can, can spread this fast. It doesn't make sense. I'm not an expert either. But it doesn't make sense that uh, in four days, it spreads from just a little thing on my toe to halfway up my leg in four days. But uh, praise God regardless. Hallelujah regardless. Praise the Most High. He gets glory regardless of whatever happens. Because he deserves it. And maybe we deserve the things that we go through. You know, maybe this is chastisement. Maybe this is, I mean, it, it doesn't even have to be chastisement. You know, look what Job went through. And, you know, the Bible says Job, <clears throat> God allowed Satan to have his way with him. To test him. And it says Satan smote Job, smote Job with boils all over his body. You know, it could be some something similar. It could be a common, I, I believe it may be a combination of a lot of things. But I trust in God. I will not continue. I mean, I will not cease from praising him. Glory to the Most High God. And, uh, you know what? Let me, let me go ahead and play this. I'm going to play this to end the video. I'm going to play a song to end this video. But I'm going to preach the gospel beforehand. Every, uh, everyone is going to stand before God for judgment. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God. It's going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. We have to get right with Jesus. He is our only hope. He is the only way. And if you truly believe in his salvation, that he died for you on the cross, and you truly turn to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. He will fill you, fill you with the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. And brothers and sisters, let's be right with God. Let's truly be right with God. And uh, I'm going to end this video by playing this song. Uh, I don't know if you, if anybody watching this has ever heard of the artist... Uh, Somewhat of a small artist, but I really like this song called uh, Devoted to Yah. And uh, give me one second to pull this up. All right. This is about, actually about a nine, almost a ten minute song, but y'all will enjoy it. Uh, it's called His Love, parentheses, Yahuwah. God bless y'all.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank y'all for tuning in. That's the end of uh, Ruth chapter 1. Again, you know, keep me in prayers. Keep my father in prayers. And uh, Shabbat Shalom to all my brothers and sisters out here. Keeping a Sabbath. That's the end of Ruth 1. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Shabbat Shalom.